This is Hell Week at Gunthorpe Farms in Indiana. They'll harvest a thousand turkeys in three days. It's a fraction of the estimated 40 million birds that will be slaughtered across the U.S. for just one meal, Thanksgiving. Americans love cheap turkey, but not all turkeys are created equal. So we went to Indiana to understand the true cost of Thanksgiving turkeys. Greg's family has been raising animals this way for four generations. Yeah, they get rained on occasionally, they even get snowed on, uh, but they get to live the life of a turkey. They're raised on grain that's not genetically modified, and Greg never gives them antibiotics. The typical turkey is raised in a barn with several other thousand turkeys. Ours, you know, get to go out, scratch in the ground, chase after some bugs, get to actually see the sun, breathe fresh air their whole life. Catching this many birds the week before Thanksgiving takes teamwork and patience. Turkeys start out as a not very intelligent bird, but they got a lot going on when they get to this age. They got a personality. The next stop is the processing plant, where they'll spend the night. But we'll catch up with them later, after Greg gives us a tour of the farm. The animals that we consume ought to eat their green leafy vegetables. They ought to get some exercise and they ought to get some sunlight. There's a handful of other farms that are raising pastured turkeys, but it's a really, really small percentage of the marketplace. All kinds of farms in America have been decreasing for decades. At the same time, the farms that have survived have gotten bigger and bigger. Greg's turkeys cost up to three times as much as mass-produced turkeys in the supermarket. The intensive work it takes to raise his birds means they'll sell for up to $6 a pound. Our biggest cost is that we just have more labor in taking care of birds. Let's get back to those turkeys we left at the processing plant. It takes about 10 people working three long days to kill and package all of these birds in time for Thanksgiving. Workers hang the birds upside down by their feet and make sure the turkeys won't feel what comes next. We stun our turkeys with electricity. Um, I think it's a really good and uh, humane way to uh, slaughter turkeys at a small scale. Greg's processing plant is audited and certified annually to prove his poultry is humanely raised and slaughtered. Next, Greg tosses the dead turkeys into the plucker, a machine that spins the birds to remove their feathers. Then, workers remove their organs. At the end of the line, Greg's son Evan dumps them into ice baths. We want them to chill as rapid as possible. These all have to last it all the way into Thanksgiving. Um, so the quicker that we can get them to chill, the better the shelf life is going to be on them. But keeping the business going just keeps getting tougher. Over the past few years, Turkey has grown to be about 15% of Greg's business. That's because for the first time in two decades, the farm is missing what used to be its biggest seller. This was um, our pasture chicken operation uh, last year. It was about 250 chickens in each one of those. We'd have 20 to 30,000 chickens on the farm at any time and would process about 3,000 of them a week. These now empty fields used to bring in half of the farm's revenue. But in 2020, Greg abandoned his chicken business. An awful lot of our business was focused on raising pastured chicken for 20 years. But it was probably the most difficult business decision that I've ever made. His chickens cost nearly twice as much as the cheap poultry that American consumers have come to expect. Wholesale buyers picked cheaper, mass-produced chickens over his. I'm extremely worried that the turkeys is uh, going to go the same route as uh, chicken. Last Thanksgiving, Greg lost a longtime retail turkey buyer. He says the order was canceled at the last minute. If you lose a big wholesale buyer, it can be devastating on a business like ours. Greg had to put hundreds of unsold Thanksgiving turkeys in the freezer. He later cut them up to sell as parts instead, but it wasn't as profitable. We get dropped on a um, regular basis by wholesalers, um, and it's almost exclusively overpriced. In some cases, we're able to um, differentiate our birds, and in some cases, we're just not. 
Greg should have an advantage with customers who care about where their meat comes from. But corporate marketers are doing their best to tap into those consumers, even if it's just about creative labeling. For example, these three turkeys look like they're from different brands, right? Well, Honeysuckle White, Shady Brook Farms, and Honest Turkey are all Cargill brands. That's a food conglomerate that is one of the 10 largest private companies in the world. At the end of the day, there's really this illusion of choice in the grocery store. We see a lot of deceptive marketing claims being made by these big companies. Advocacy groups filed a deceptive advertising complaint with the Federal Trade Commission against Cargill in 2020. Cargill told Insider it believes the claim lacks merit and that its turkey production is in line with USDA standards. The FTC said it can't disclose the status of the complaint. Cargill says their turkeys are raised by independent family farmers. This is how it works. Large companies like Cargill or Purdue Farms will often contract smaller farms to produce their chicken and turkey. But some small farmers say they lost their independence once they were contracted with companies. Craig Watts was one of them. He raised chickens on contract for Purdue Farms for more than 20 years. The company owns the birds, the company owns the feed. He says Purdue controlled how many chickens he raised and how he raised them. I definitely would have not had 30,000 birds crammed in a 20,000 square foot facility. In 2012, Craig says he filmed Purdue employees on his farm throwing chicks to the ground and kicking birds. He ended his contract with Purdue in 2016. They give you this image of mom and pa kettle and the pitchfork and a nice white picket fence and the red barn and the pretty white chicken, when in reality, the conditions that these animals are raising are miserable. In a statement to Insider, Purdue said it was not familiar with Craig's videos and that they don't reflect its current practices. The company also said it announced commitments to animal care, including focuses on farmer relationships and transparency. Purdue connected us with a current contract farmer, Stephen Brake. We have a whole lot of control of what we do. We're not sitting here at the mercy of Purdue. Stephen confirmed that Purdue owns the chickens he raises and manages their feed. Back at Gunthorpe Farms, Greg's turkeys are chilled and ready to be bagged. Despite all the extra costs, Greg doesn't want to give up his farming methods, even if it makes it harder for him to stay in the business. In a week, customers will pick up their turkeys from Greg in Chicago or directly from the farm in rural Indiana. And this time around, he plans to sell all of his turkeys. It's very rewarding to know that we're um, raising uh, turkeys for people that care about how their food's raised, how it's processed, how it gets to them. Thank you.